there, guys? Ah, Lake Pierce Scuba. Here at Dive Coorthas in Lindsay, Ontario, up on the Coorthas. Great cottage country, good diving. Today we're talking about lubricants, greases and oils. Now you probably, if you have a car, and this is North America, every family has five cars, uh, plus the RV. Uh, anyway, you know that uh, lubricants are very, very important. You got oils and you got greases and you got gear oils and you got uh, high pressure greases and, and you got CV, all kinds of lubricants. Well, fortunately, in the scuba system, it's not quite that complicated. In the scuba system, essentially, for the entire system, you need one lubricant. That's why that's kind of nice. Because the only thing that needs to be lubri lubricated, really, in the scuba system are parts that move. Yeah. Dynamic is what they're called. Parts that don't move are called static. Like Kevin, I call Kevin my static buddy. <laughs> but anything that moves is dynamic and requires lubricant. Okay? And in most cases, the lubricant doesn't actually go into the metal. You can lubricate the metal if you want to. But quite frankly, you don't need to lubricate the metal if the O-ring is lubricated properly. Because the metal, anything metal that moves, let's d discuss for a second. A piston. Some regulars want to talk about this, you'll see. I've done some already, but I have some more interesting information about piston regulators and others. And there's a piston, and a piston just like in an automobile, like in a car. The piston goes up and down, like this, much faster. You can't see it moving, it's oscillating so fast, up and down like this. And the piston, the metal piston, doesn't touch the metal sides of the cylinder, of, of the little chamber that's in, doesn't touch it, because there's an O-ring in there, you see? So if the O-ring is properly lubricated, you don't have to lubricate the metal parts, although, uh, within reason, it doesn't hurt if you do. The reason for this little uh, session, though, is that somebody asked me, can I use my silicone grease in my oxygen-cleaned regulator? In fact, the only answer is no, you cannot, because Assuming you want to keep your oxygen clean, oxygen compatible regulator ready to use for nitrox diving, in other words, you want to keep it clean for oxygen use, you have to use oxygen compatible grease. Silicone won't do the trick. Silicone and oxygen, over a period of time, depending on the concentration of the oxygen, will deteriorate the regular neoprene O-rings. And the silicone lubricant, the common silicone lubricant that is used in almost all scuba diving equipment, all the fins, masks, snorkels, and is often used, water-based, often used uh, to lubricate parts in a regulator as well. No, you can't do that. So what you need to do is you need to have, first of all, all the O-rings and parts of your tank and valve and, and regulator, if you've had them oxygen clean, now they're using oxygen compatible. Okay? Uh, O-rings. Viton or one of the other brands, there's lots of them, and they've all been lubricated. They've been clean. They're clean, perfectly clean before this happens. Okay? The regulator is completely clean using a variety of substances. Alcohol was what we used to use in the beginning, but now there are specialized cleaning for oxygen compatible cleaning. So now you're going to put in your new oxygen compatible O-rings, so you need to use oxygen compatible lubricant. And here's a typical one. There are several. Crystal lube comes to mind, a very, very common one, uh, a tri-lube, uh, and so on. There, there's several uh, lubricants. You just go on to Google and punch in OA oxygen, OC, oxygen compatible lubricant. And uh, it'll be a list of them in there. And, but here's one from a company called Marine Research Labs, and it is O2 lube, nitrox system lubricant, specifically a nitrox system lubricant. Now they call this O2 lube, that's the name of it, O2 lube, a good name actually, O2 lube. <laughs> O2 lube is oxidizer compatible. Oxidizer is another word for oxygen. You know, sort of, sort of. Not really. Oxygen is the name of the gas. It is an oxidizer, which means it oxidizes, rusts, affects, deteriorates. That's what oxidation, you know, oxidize something. It means it breaks down in the presence of oxygen. So this is, uh, this lube is oxidizer compatible chemically inert, and it's odorless too. Anyway, for use with nitrox and O2 breathing, and this is the only lubricant you use in your tank that's been cleaned for nitrox use when they lubricate the, uh, the threads a very little bit and the O-ring a very little bit and put that valve back in, 
This is what they use. When they completely disassemble you, all the parts are laid out from your regular. They've laid them all out and they got them all clean, spotlessly clean. He's using white gloves. You know, lots of dye store service people do. They wear white gloves or at the very least uh, silicone gloves. Be very, very careful to keep it clean, spotlessly clean. And they start to reassemble it. Every place where lubricant is required, that's what they use. Oxygen lube. That's just that simple. So the answer to your question, very simply, no. You cannot use a, 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 a normal lubricant, silicone lubricant, the most common, spray, grease, doesn't matter. If it says on the bottle, this is a silicone lubricant for a regulator system, no, don't use it for your regulator system if it's, a, if it's been nitrox cleaned. Okay, is that clear? You must use a, a, a lubricant made for oxygen systems, nitrox systems. Okay. Real simple one. There you go. I wasn't sure if you knew that. There are two types of lubricants, essentially. I mean, there's lots of them. There's two types. And the difference, essentially, is one is oxygen compatible, one is not. There you go. I don't know if there's anything in there for you guys, but I hope that helped a little bit. Talk to you again soon. Alec Pierce. We're going to go diving on the train up in the Finland Channel here in Kawartha. Bye-bye.